Hello friends, I am Mr. Sen Murthy. I am ex deputy in Bank of India. I was overseeing its uh, bank's uh, risk management and treasury uh, mid office of the bank. Uh, having, uh, I was also chief in both in forex and uh, domestic treasury. Products are emerging and all that. Now uh, ABF has asked me to talk what are the latest updates and what are the rudimentary things in derivative products and uh, I'm going to talk to you for next 30 minutes on this to start with derivative derivative always think that it is something foreign to us it is not like that and uh, uh, definition of financial derivatives everybody knows it is an instrument which derives its value from the underlying exposure most of the time you ask a definition people say it's an underlying asset it need not be an underlying asset the correct definition is it's an instrument which derives its value from the underlying exposure the underlying exposure can be an asset it can be a liability and it can be another derivative also i will give some examples for this for, to start with for example now after liberalization corporates can raise external commercial borrowings from abroad suppose let us think that a corporate which has read dcp linked to libor normally it is linked to six months libor mostly which is a liability for the because it, it, the corporate takes a loan it means a liability it has to pay let us think that a link to libor and uh, and the corporate is of the opinion that the LIBOR will raise in future. It means if they don't cover themselves, they will end up in paying more interest. That's why the corporate can go for an IRS interest rate swap and convert the interest payment as fixed when it when it thinks the LIBOR in future would go up. It means it will pay fixed and receive floating. This is what they will do when they think that I have this interest rate will go up. Now come banks are now lending linked to a, foreign currency loans the fcnrb funds which are lying idle or they can be uh, rotated and given back to the uh, people as foreign currency loans in the form of pcfc or foreign currency loans and similarly banks are giving foreign currency loan linked to libor now again libor the when banks are extending loans they will be getting interest rate linked to libor from the customers suppose bank think that this libor is going to go down now they they can also banks can also go for IRS and convert interest receivable and fixed when the bank thinks that LIBOR in future would come down. So this is an opposite position what we have discussed already. So we have seen one case of a derivative covering a liability, another case of derivative covering an asset. Next, where the derivative under one more derivative. Now if you see recently SEBI has permitted option on gold futures. It means on a future on a gold future the uh, traders and investors can take right uh, can take um, an option on this so this is an option so sebi has permitted option on gold futures commodity future this is an example of writing or um, uh, Person, a person taking a position of an option under underlying one more derivative called futures. Now we will delve further. Presently, what are the products that are permitted by RBI by the banks to give the following derivative product of instruments used to hedge an existing interest rate forex exposure or it can be for a combination of interest rate and forex. It means if the combination of interest rate and forex, it is done through currency swaps on a standalone basis. It can be generic derivative products such as forex forward contracts, forward rate agreements uh, or interest rate caps and collars, forward rate can also be IRS or forward rate agreement is a fraud or for short term period up to one year but anything beyond one year then it is covered through interest rate swaps and again interest rate caps and floors colors vanilla plain vanilla only RBI is permitting all simple products no complicated products RBI is permitting um, plain vanilla options again simple um, like a call option, put option, there are if you see barrier option, digital option, knock in, knock out options are there. These are all not permitted RBA because the, the rule is know your product, either from bank point of view or from customer point of view. Unless they know the product, they should not go in for it. That's why RBA is making the life of the both the banks and the customers very simple. Sell or the customers can buy only simple products, plain vanilla options, interest rate swaps, and currency swaps including cross-currency swaps.
now they are called generic products now we are going for structured product now what is structured product structured product is i am stitching a cloth a cloth according to the need of my customer and i am stitching a derivative according to the need of my uh, taking the need of the customer the bank stitches a derivative products the following derivative products may be treated as structured products instruments which are in combination of their cash instrument or one or more generic derivative products it means cash means cash market plus any one of this generic product when you combine that becomes structure or instrument which are combination of two or more generic derivatives so cash will not be there you can combine both suppose currency swap means it takes care of both forex as well as your interest rate so i am combining two generic it may be ensured that structured product do not contain any derivative which is not allowed it means i cannot structure a bank cannot structure a project which is not if suppose one one two three four five six seventh item is not there so on standalone the seventh item is there it should not come here as structured product so any one of the six product only come under structuring now let us see what are the further rules and regulation on derivative products all permitted derivative transactions including rollover restructuring innovation it should be only at the prevailing market rate you should not quote off market rate any rollover restructuring should be based on what is the rate that is going on today all risk arising derivative exposure should be analyzed documented both transaction and portfolio level it means individual also and if the customer takes cluster of derivative at portfolio level also risk should be measured the management of derivative activity should be at an integral part of overall risk management policy and mechanism it is expected from rbi not only treasury which has marked the derivative normally the derivatives are marketed from treasury so what rbi says it is not only the treasury which has marked derivative product to the client but also senior management board of directors must also understand the risk they need not fully understand but at least they should know what is the risk inherent in the derivative activities being undertaken so it should be at the level of senior management and board of directors normally the derivative products emerge out of funded exposure such as foreign currency loans pcfcs and non funded exposure such as import lc standby lc so banks take collaterals normally uh, uh, the question is that out of derivative transactions banks can incur loss how this loss will be covered so if you see <coughs> customers are normally coming for this non funded derivatives only out of their funded exposures or import lcs so normally banks already take collateral for this funded exposures these collaterals are extended to cover losses that may that they can incur on derivative transactions also that's what it is again written in the ppt banks take collateral for such funded or non funded facilities these collaterals are extended to cover any derivative losses that can occur on derivative exposures also sometimes if the collateral is not adequate like exchanges bank also ask for margins um, if the in case the collaterals are not adequate banks can where they are consider necessary call for cash margin or liquid collateral from the customers in respect of derivative transaction undertaken on mark to market basis what is mark to market what is the price given to derivative what is today's price when i compare it can come in profit or loss if it is loss such collateral should be extended to cover this loss then one more important guidelines on derivative is that suitability of the product i always say that we cannot sell a diamond suit to a farmer because even though farmer may be interested what is the use of this product to him so rbi is very particular on suitability if a bank sells a product which is not suitable to a customer and the customer says that it is not suitable to me now rbi very clearly says that the derivative should be reversed back and any loss should be borne by the bank that's why rbi again and again say that before selling the derivative products whether it is suitable to the customers level or not so i for an individual customer or a partnership firm i cannot sell uh, a structured product which they cannot understand so my market makers particularly those right sell the options should have a suitability and appropriate policy it means policy means rbi clearly say that any policy should board mandated policy it is not approved by general manager or ed or md level it is board mandated policy so every bank should have a suitability and appropriate policy so that by virtue of that they can prove that yes i sold 2017 where it was stated that this scheme 
is aimed at simplifying the process for edging the exchange risk by reducing documentation, mainly documentation requirements, and avoid prescriptive stipulations regarding products, purpose and edging flexibility. RBI also stated that the scheme is expected to encourage more dynamic and efficient healthy culture. So even people who don't know about edging, by virtue of the circle, they'll come to know and they can take all edging products, but to cover only their exchange rate risk. What are the operational guidelines? Who can residents and non-residents other than individuals? Simply it means it is only for corporates. It is not available or other than individuals. If the users, customers should not should appoint, which means the customer should transact only with one AD bank. It is called a designated bank. The designated bank will assess the edging requirement of the user and say the limit given by RBA is USD 30 million on outstanding of the outer outstanding contracts. If they want to extra, exceed this limit, RBA permits up to 150% of this limit. It means up to dollar 45 million they can go. If edging requirement of the user exceeds the limit in, in course of time, the, the designated bank may reassess and at its discretion. Now RBA has given this full responsible accountable to the bank, extend the time limit up to 150% of the stipulated cap. Uh, hedge contracts in OTC market can be booked with any authorized category one bank provided the underlying cash flows takes place. That's why the designated bank is given. If they take the cash flow should go through the designated bank only. Cost reduction, all cost reduction structures can be such reduction structures comes normally in option contracts. Cost reduction structures can be booked by users provided that resident unlisted companies can use such structures only if they have minimum net worth of 200 crores. It means if they are not listed, unlisted companies with a net worth of 200 crores, they can they can come for uh, taking any hedge products to reduce their foreign exchange risk under this circular. But all listed entities are permitted. To continue, what are further guidelines? Users are not required to furnish any documentary evidence for establishing and at the time of taking, they need not give any documentary evidence establish underlying exposure under the facility. Users may however provide basic details of the underlying transaction is standardized. This format is going to be devised by RBI, uh, going to be devised by FedEye only in case of OTC edge contracts. Cancelled contracts can be re re freely rebooked with the same bank. That's why designated bank is required. Users um, users booking contracts under the facility should not book contracts under any other. It means if they go under this, they should not go under any other bank or uh, any other OTC or exchange traded market. <coughs> At the end of each financial year, the user will provide the designated bank with a statement signed by the head of the uh, 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 head of finance or head of entity to that effect. The edge contracts booked in both OTC and exchange trader market under the facility are backed by underlying exchange rate exposure, either contracted or uh, or anticipated. The exposures underlying the uh, hedge contracts booked under the facility are not hedged. So you should not take same hedge with the two banks. That's why a designated bank has come. And uh, all these, the designated bank should report this, whatever they, they should, now RBI, CCA, RBI is permitted CCAL to come out with a trade repository. So all these uh, derivative transactions should be reported to a trade repository so that uh, it can maintain a data. Conclusion is, this facility is expected to avoid unnecessary adults and encourage more dynamic and efficient edging culture. So this is one of the very good circular. Next we are going to, uh, RBA is 26 February 2018 circular and here it is uh, permitted RBA's revised guidelines relating to participation of persons resident in India and foreign port portfolio investors in the exchange traded currency derivatives and originally before the circulars if you see foreign portfolio investors are allowed to take US dollar position only up to USD 15 million in other currencies that is Euro, INR, GBP another put together up to another 5 million dollar is given now this limit stands revised from 26th February 2018 RBI has permitted person resident in India and foreign portfolio investors to take position both long or short without having to establish 
existence of underlying exposure up to a single limit of USD 100 million equivalent across all currencies pairs. Now this two different limits have gone. Now one currency, one limit and including all currency pairs involving INR put together and combined across all exchanges. So it should not exceed 100 million. This is effective from 26th February 2018. And again, 8th March, in order to uh, develop uh, the interest rate futures market, 8th March, again, SEBI uh, has come out with a circular based on the recommendation of RBI. In order to attract more foreign funds, market regulators, SEBI in March 2018 decided to allocate separate limit of 5,000 crore to foreign portfolio investors for taking long position in interest rate futures because interest rate future is not very actively uh, uh, traded in India. So these measures will give them um, more leeway to trade. Before the issue of circular, a fee limit for government security is fungible that is between investment securities they can switch over now there's an exclusive limit of 5000 crores all these things they allow to uh, foreign portfolio investors now they can uh, trade heavily on interest rate future to protect their uh, interest rate risk but the, within the total available limit 5000 crore they are given the outer limit they are given is within the limits prescribed for investment total limit it means it will, it will all the investment by foreign portfolio government security currently 3,1500 crores exclusively available. So this is one of the effects taken by um, both jointly by RBI RB and CB in order to uh, improve the derivative market for, particularly for interest rate futures. Again, 12th March 2018 this is one of the important guidelines after the PNB episode has come. Now yeah, RBI is revised direction on edging commodity price risk and freight risk in overseas market where it is excluded because the PNB with the problem it came because of gold. Now RBI from 12th March it has excluded, uh, excluded gold, gems and precious stones from the list of commodities whose price risk can be edged. The development comes in the backdrop of 12,600 crore letter of undertaking fraud committed at Punjab National Bank involving fraudulent issue of letter of undertaking in one of the one of the Mumbai branches in favor of companies in the gems and jewelry. That's why now they have been excluded. Under new directions, commodities whose price can be hedged in those of direct exposure. Direct exposure means including all commodities except gold, gems and precious stones. Commodities whose price can be hedged in, the, in case of indirect exposures are aluminum, copper, lead zinc nickel and tin rbi said the revised direction shall it will be effective from 1st april 2018 and again what is the meaning of direct exposure all eligible entities will will say will set to have direct exposure to commodity price risk if a purchase sells commodity whose price is fixed by a reference to an international benchmark if inter, if it is not linked to an international benchmark linked to it then it becomes an indirect exposure and if it is recognized reference to international benchmark it becomes a direct exposure and again this can be made use of by exposure to freight risk also all eligible entities will be said to have exposure to freight freight risk if it is engaged in business of refining oil or engaged in the business of shipping so this is can be done by all um, companies having shipping business and permitted products generic we have seen future forward vanilla structured is combination we have already seen and again what are the precautions a bank has to take for structured products structured derivative product can be permitted eligible who are listed on recognized domestic stock exchanges fully owned subsidiaries and again unlisted 200 we have already seen all payment receipt related edging exposures to commodity price risk and freight risk should be routed through a special account opened okay there should be a special account for the bank should keep uh, on the record full details of all edge transaction bank should obtain an annual certificate and statutory auditor should go through and say that all these product, product are taken correctly and this this product is suitable for them statutory audit should also comment on risk management policy of the corporate whether it's adequate or not 
and lastly now uh, 60 april 2018 circular rba since reviewed its stand and issued guidelines stating that now structured product there are a lot of problems now plain vanilla forex options call option put options now this has even ordinary people those who are trading they have come to know what is call option what is put option call option gives right to buy put option to get to say now this has been taken out of the structured products so rba 60 april 2018 has since reviewed its stand and issued guidelines stating that standalone plain vanilla forex options vanilla forex option without attached structures purchased by clients will be exempt from users user suitability approval it means the every bank i told that rba said that you have to come with the banks have to come out with a suitability and appropriate policy and this policy now will not cover forward contract and simple vanilla forex options will not be cover, covered under structured product they they now all forex vanilla forex option will be on par with forward contracts and it can be taken freely without any uh, uh, without any restrictions so this will be taken out and uh, um, the remaining products that means other the remaining are derivative products other than forwards and simple vanilla forex option will come under this user suitability and appropriateness norms and all regulatory requirements will be at par with forward contracts so again again what i'm telling if the the banks which are selling or which are writing the uh, derivative products they should be very clear they should see that before selling the product whether this product is useful to the customer or not if later on is proved that the customer goes to the court of law or goes to the ombudsman say that this product is not good for me then rba comes heavily and uh, this misselling aspect is a very very allergic name for the regulators you should prove that the product sold is suitable for the customer if the product sold is not suitable then rba will say it is misselling misselling means it is not suitable for the customer and the, this pro, this derivative product has to be reversed back and it has to be taken by the uh, bank at its own whatever the loss any consequential loss expenditure it has to be borne by the bank itself and nothing we cannot recover anything from the customer that's why by selling the derivative products banks are to be very very careful and take all risk management policies and they should see that that mid office now you know mid office is the one who takes care of the risk management whenever any derivative products are sold any structured product for sold it is for a mid office to track it properly whether it fits within the policy whether the risk appetite taken by the bank is correct so mid office will give an independent report now all you know that the mid office even though it sits in treasury it is not reporting to the general manager or treasury in charge so so even though they sit along with front office back office the mid office report independently normally as per the way by indian culture all the mid office heads they are report to the risk management head so any derivative products from business point of view your report will come emanate from treasury and from risk point of view your report will emanate from mid office and again at the top level probably at the ed level or md level both of them will be discussed now the uh, front of the dealing room or the treasury head will say why they have sold that uh, derivative product in order to a business or in order to earn a commission or in order to earn a profit he will argue that he has sold the product but from risk management point of view the same from mid office report the head of the risk will say that even though this this income is coming the risk taken by the bank is more heavy or more than the risk reward parity whether this should always be seen by the mid office whether the reward taken will take care of the risk suppose uh, probably it cannot be today's if in future today there is an income but the risk once slice may be more than the reward then the mid office should put himself on the guard and they should always deliberate at the alm meeting or any top level meeting the 